Six years have passed since Panasonic initially introduced the Lumix DC G9, and now they've unveiled its successor, the Lumix G9 II. This camera represents Panasonic's top-tier offering for still photographers and marks a significant milestone as the first-ever Lumix Micro Four Thirds camera to incorporate phase detection autofocus technology. While primarily designed for stills, the G9 II boasts an impressive array of video features. Let's dive into the details. Unlike a mere refresh of the original DSLR-like Lumix G9 concept, the G9 II takes a more contemporary approach. It not only inherits technological advancements from Panasonic's full-frame Lumix S series, but also shares an identical external design with the S5 II, which was introduced earlier in the year. The camera has a taller profile, sharper edges, and a more extensive array of controls compared to its predecessor. Interestingly, it shares the same external shell as the S5 II, with the exception of fan vents, and features a different lens mount and sensor internally. The G9-2's foundation is built around a sensor that shares lineage with the one found in the GH6, but it has undergone substantial hardware and software revisions. The most prominent enhancement is the introduction of phase detection elements, making it the first Micro Four Thirds Lumix camera with inherently depth-aware autofocus capabilities. Another noteworthy change is the improved dual output gain system. This system employs two distinct readout paths subject to varying levels of gain, which are subsequently merged to create a 16-bit RAW file, expanding the dynamic range. On the G9 II, Panasonic has extended the use of the high-gain path, now available from the base ISO upward. This suggests that the high-gain step can be employed at lower ISO settings. Surprisingly, the G9 II offers an extensive range of video features, in contrast to its predecessor, which lacked many video capabilities at launch. Panasonic emphasizes that this camera is primarily intended for still photographers, but its comprehensive set of video resolutions and features, including Vlog and OpenGate 5. 8K recording makes it appear almost as versatile as the GH6 or S5 2X. The camera retains the full-size HDMI port from the S5 II series and even allows direct recording to a USB-C SSD. With its enhanced autofocus system, one might wonder why anyone would opt for a GH6 over the G9 II. Panasonic's explanation is that G9 II users should consider it more as a secondary camera rather than their primary run-and-gun setup, mainly due to the absence of a fan which could become problematic when shooting high-resolution video in hot environments. The G9 II features an improved in-body image stabilization system, offering a robust 8-stop CIPA-rated stabilization. Panasonic introduces the Synchi IS system, allowing the camera to maintain 7.5 stops of correction at longer focal lengths, where the in-body system alone would struggle. The Synchi IS system also enables the G9-2's 100MP handheld high-res mode. Although this mode requires slightly more time to stitch images due to the higher resolution, Panasonic's sophisticated algorithm effectively reduces subject motion. In an effort to enhance subject detection, Panasonic has revamped its depth from defocus AF system. The G9-2 introduces new subject detection and tracking algorithms, including categories for animals, cars, and motorcycles. The animal mode even includes eye detection for added precision. When comparing the G9 II to other cameras in its price range, it faces tough competition. The Micro Four Thirds realm is competitive, with rivals like the OM System OM1 offering a lighter build, superior battery life, and a sharper EVF. Additionally, the APS-C market presents appealing alternatives, such as the Fujifilm X-T5 and Sony A6700, both of which are more affordable than the Lumix G9 II. Overall, the G9 II holds its own in the Micro Four Thirds system, but it faces strong contenders in the APS-C segment. While the original G9 catered to DSLR photographers with a distinct design philosophy, its successor embraces a more modern approach. The G9 II features a plethora of controls, making it a comprehensive redesign. Despite some changes and the larger form factor, it remains comfortable to hold. However, the EVF hasn't seen significant improvement, maintaining a 3680K dot panel with a slight decrease in magnification at 0.8x. In practical use, it performs well, 
with magnification compensating for the resolution. On the other hand, the rear articulating LCD receives a substantial upgrade, now boasting 1840K dots, providing a detailed and bright shooting experience even in direct sunlight. The G92 meets expectations in terms of connectivity, offering a full-size HDMI port, fast USB-C PD charging with 10 GBPs transfer speeds, and the ability to record to an external SSD. It also provides mic and headphone sockets, with the former positioned away from the screen hinge for convenience. Inside the G92, you'll discover the same DMW BLK 2216WH battery as found in other Lumix models. However, the G92 delivers approximately 390 shots per charge according to CIPA standards, whether using the LCD or EVF. This falls short of competing cameras in its class, notably trailing the OM System OM-1 by 130 shots and the Fujifilm X-T5 by 190. So there you have it, a comprehensive review of the Panasonic Lumix G92. It's clear that Panasonic has aimed high with this camera, but the competition in the market is fierce. We hope this detailed overview helps you decide whether the G92 is the right tool for your photography needs. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more in-depth camera reviews and photography tips. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, keep capturing those moments.